On this episode of AMA Air, learn how local councils are starting to integrate drones into their communities. And meet one of AMA's very own staff members over in the National Model Aviation Museum. Plus, hear how one AMA member is helping study oyster reefs. All this and more on today's edition of AMA Air. Hello and welcome to AMA Air, your source for modeling news. I'm Chris Savage. And I'm Erin Dobbs. You may notice that things look a little different around here. That's right. We've made a few changes, so make sure you stick around to see what we have in store for you. First, let's take a look at what some of our clubs are planning with an event preview. The Tucson Free Flight Model Airplane Club will be holding an Armed Forces Memorial event at Webster Field West in Arizona City, Arizona on November 11th. According to the event organizers, if it's free flight, there's a category for it. And as the holiday season approaches, some of our clubs are planning events to benefit Toys for Tots. Hampton Roads Radio Control will be holding an event on November 4th from 9 to 3 in Suffolk, Virginia, featuring food, flying, and a candy drop for the kids. Pilots can either pay a $10 landing fee or bring one new unwrapped toy. The Northern Virginia RC Club is also planning an event to benefit Toys for Tots. Be sure to join the club for the NVRC annual Toys for Tots Fun Fly at Poplar Ford Park in Centerville, Virginia on November 4th from 8 to noon. The entry fee for spectators and pilots is one unwrapped toy valued at a minimum of $10 and toys will be collected rain or shine. Warps RC Club will be hosting a fall fly-in on November 11th in Barrick, Louisiana. For a $20 pilot fee, anything flies from quads to jets. The field features a grass runway and covered pits and a food truck will be on site. The South Jersey Aero Modelers will be holding a control line racing and speed contest on November 5th at Mountain View Park in Middlesex, New Jersey. Categories include Sportsman Clown, One Ounce Goodyear, Foxburg, Perky Speed, and Fox 35 Speed. Finally, the Northwest Houston RC Club will be holding their first annual Northwest RC Float Fly on November 11th, starting at 8.30 a.m. in Hockley, Texas. There is a $15 landing fee, a swap meet for registered pilots, and a pilot's lunch. The field will have a 660 by 50 foot waterway, so if it floats or flies, be sure to bring it. For more information on these events or to find one in your area, you can check out the sanctioned event calendar in Model Aviation or at modelaircraft.org. Well, I gotta say, I'm really, really excited about this particular new section of the show because I think it's a lot of fun to look at some of the cool things our clubs are doing all over the country all year round. Absolutely, our clubs do a lot of good things, so we need to highlight that more often. Definitely. Coming up on AMA Air, we'll take a look at some recent headlines here at AMA and in the world of model aviation. Want more news and stories from the AMA and Model Aviation Magazine? Subscribe to the new Media Minute newsletter. You'll get a quick look at some of the stories you might have missed from Model Aviation right in your inbox. And for the drone and helicopter enthusiasts, the new Rotor Report is just for you. You'll find stories, tips and tricks, product reviews, and more from the world of helicopters and drones that will get your props spinning. Find these newsletters and others at www.modelaircraft.org slash publications. The U.S. Senate and U.S. House of Representatives have passed a six-month extension of the FAA's current authorization. The new FAA extension provides continuity for the aviation community, including model aircraft. The extension means that the special rule for model aircraft will remain in place and our members can continue to fly under AMA set of community-based safety guidelines, as we have for many decades. Our government relations team is already collaborating with Congress on next year's full FAA reauthorization bill that strengthens the special rule for model aircraft and affirms the role of community-based organizations like AMA in educating and managing hobbyists. As always, the most current information about our government relations efforts is available on our website at modelaircraft.org gov. 
The AMA has partnered with the University Aviation Association to launch the UAS for STEM Collegiate Challenge. This competition is designed for university students to learn, practice, and demonstrate professional unmanned aircraft system knowledge, mission planning, flight skills, data collection, analysis, and safety practices in a competitive environment. As AMA Director of Education Bill Pritchett said, Following the success of the UAS for STEM with high school students across the country, it only made sense to add a collegiate challenge. All participating teams will be required to complete an online curriculum to learn about multi-rotor safety and operation and will have access to a 10% educational discount on DJI products. Registration will open on November 1st. Well, the AMA Foundation for the Future Sweepstakes is back, and this year the winner will receive a trip to AMA Expo West 2018, along with a ride in Lady Alice, a P-51 Mustang. The contest began October 2nd, and it ends December 8th. Anyone 18 years or older can enter once a week, and donations are accepted and appreciated. For more information, visit the AMA Foundation blog. Last month, representatives from AMA attended the National Recreation and Parks Association Conference in New Orleans to build relationships with park directors and help parks create flying sites. At this conference last year, several park directors were concerned about drones in their communities. But this year, their thoughts were a little different. Let's take a look. In our situation, we found that uh, because of the folks that make up that show, who, who goes to those shows, they do seminars and other things too, um, it's, it's the people who are generally decision makers within the county and those that are looking for new activities within their park. They're looking for a different demographic or an additional demographic to bring to their park. So it's not the same people all the time. Nothing wrong with what they have, but they know they need to reach out to the community more. Um, at our, uh, uh, attempts at speaking with the folks at the National Recreation and Park Association is to let them know that we understand their concerns about drone issues and we kind of changed our messaging so that when they walk by our booth they could see that. Um, that if they had questions about drones in their park, what was going on, that we could, we could talk to them. And that would usually bring them in. And then we could sit down and talk about what the specific areas, what they're looking to do. Last year, we had a lot of park directors and park staff that came up to us and said, you know, we're running into issues um, with people flying in the parks, they're flying over people and things like that. Um, what can we do to, to stop these people from flying inside of our parks? Um, and obviously, you know, that's a form of recreation, so we don't want that. Uh, so, so we worked with those parks and, you know, mitigated any issues they had. And when we returned this year, we noticed that there had been a drastic shift in, in acceptance, I guess, so to say. Uh, it went from we're having an issue to, hey, we want to be part of this movement. We want, we want to bring this to our park. You just need a small amount of space and some grass that's cut. You don't need a whole lot of stuff. They don't have to build things. They don't have to spend a lot of money. So um, when we create that site, they find out it's, it's really not much involved. They don't need a bunch of space. They can usually figure out a place with it. You can see the wheels turning. Oh, yeah, I think of a couple of spots in our parks that that would fit. I think it's just the natural flow of things. I think that, you know, maybe some of that negative energy is going away, and now people are becoming more accepting of it and realize, you know, this is here to stay. Um, and it's nothing new. We understand there's still some bad actors out there that we need to educate the public on and kind of bring them into the fold of, hey, there's rules and regulations you need to follow. Um, and I, we think this is one way to do that. Um, give them a place to fly. You know, AMA will be there to help, either through members or a club or headquarters, and we'll help manage those sites and we'll make sure that people are flying responsibly. Do you ever wonder about all of us working here at AMA? Sometimes I wonder about Aaron a little bit, and Aaron probably wonders about me. Well, coming up, you can meet one of our staff members over at the National Model Aviation Museum. Generations of Flight is all about showcasing model aircraft enthusiasts and their love for the hobby. This month, we're featuring stories about getting into the hobby at an early age. So visit generationsofflight.com, click on Submit a Photo, and share your story today.
Some of our members may feel like everything at AMA headquarters, including the staff, is a bit of a mystery. So we thought we'd take the opportunity each episode and take a look into the lives of some AMA employees. Today, we're going to introduce you to Michael Smith. Let's take a look. My name is Michael Smith. I'm the director of the National Model Aviation Museum here with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. Uh, so regular day job, taking care of the museum, working on exhibits, uh, things like that, uh, research on airplanes. At home, I'm a big uh, history nut in terms of World War I. I am really interested, and if anybody sees me reading a book or anything like that, uh, at lunch or something, generally it's a, a biography or autobiography of a World War I pilot, or it might be a book, a specific book about a specific type of airplane or something. I always, whenever we're out and about, go to used bookstores and whatnot, so those are always dangerous places that I end up with a handful of books or something on the way out. Um, it's always interesting to see what you can find. And I'm also into modeling. I was building models, plastic models and so forth when I was uh, 10, 11, and I still build models. I still, my wife kind of jokes that it's not so much that I build models, I just buy the kits to open them up and look at the parts and look at the instructions. Um, so I've got quite a uh, plastic model collection that ranges anything from uh, World War I up through World War II, present day. Uh, I usually look at 148 scale. I also build RC models. Uh, Greg Prater, our plans coordinator, and I are both building a quarter scale SE5s. Uh, so I've got the wings uh, that I'm working on. Greg's a little further along than me. Uh, he's got all his wings built, but uh, trying to work on that, see if maybe we can get those done and flying in the air for 2018 um, for the anniversary. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah, in terms of airplanes and whatnot, World War I, I, I really like the pushers. I want to uh, scratch build uh, a quarter scale FB-12 of Vickers. Uh, they built four of them, so something like that. Uh, World War II, I uh, really like the Corsair, uh, the Bowfighter, um, and then the F-15E in terms of modern aircraft and whatnot, uh, very intriguing. Um, have through some of my uh, uh, other projects, I was fortunate enough to get an American flag that was actually flown in an F-15E on one of the operations. So have a plan to build a 132nd scale model of that with the, the flag and actually do it in the colors of the, the airplane that uh, it was flown in. Um, a lot of my other time is uh, bicycling. I've been bicycling again since I was a teenager. Um, used to race and as they always say, the older you get the better you used to be. Um, so have a lot of fond memories of racing in New Mexico and Arizona and Texas and whatnot. Uh, my wife also rides, so we do like the ride across to Indiana, which is 160 miles in July. It's one way, one day. Um, so those are kind of some of the things that uh, occupy my time when I'm not here, uh, here at work. Michael really is a walking encyclopedia of museum knowledge. Um, when I first started to work here, uh, I went over there, took a tour, and I was just amazed by what he knows about model aircraft. Michael is a wealth of knowledge and a good resource for all of us in the building when it comes to the history of AMA. So even at his age, he knows a lot of history. Absolutely. Well, coming up, we'll hear about one AMA member who's looking out for North Carolina's oyster reefs. It's time to make your voice heard. The AMA elections are here and it's your opportunity to help shape the leadership of the AMA. Your official ballot will arrive in your mailbox ready for your vote. No stamp or envelope necessary. Ballots must be postmarked no later than November the 9th. Do you have a story you think we should have on AMA Air? Then visit air.modelaircraft.org and tell us about it by sending us an airmail. And if you're not already a member of the AMA, be sure to visit modelaircraft.org and sign up today. AMA member Anna Wendell has been chosen for a fellowship program supported by North Carolina's Space Grant and Sea Grant programs. Anna, along with another graduate student, will use satellite and remote sensing data in new research projects exploring oyster reefs and storm impacts on the North Carolina coast. 
Anna is a student at the Duke University Nicholas School of Environment, and she's also a member of the Blue Devil Drones, an AMA University model aviation student club at Duke. The club made headlines earlier this year when the Duke Marine Lab became the first to win an FAA certification to operate scientific drones and provide training. That's all for this episode of AMA Air. You can stay connected with us by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For even more videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And from all of us here at AMA, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time, everybody. But for now, it's time to get flying.